Welcome to the Lead Object Tap, where we begin with the politics lead in a major retreat from President Trump after Republicans on Capitol Hill objected to his push to make health care and the repeal of Obamacare a major issue for the 2020 presidential election. President Trump had been claiming that the Republicans were developing a health care plan to replace Obamacare, and the Trump administration just joined a lawsuit to try to end Obamacare immediately, though they had no plan in place for the 20 million Americans who would immediately lose access to their health insurance. But after hearing from allies in Congress, the president is now backing off, announcing the Republicans will not hold a vote on any new health care plan until after the 2020 election. Well, if we get back the House and on the assumption we keep the Senate and we keep the presidency, which I hope are two good assumptions, uh, we're going to have a phenomenal health care. Notwithstanding the president's attempted punt of the issue, of course, his raising it to begin with guarantees the Democrats are going to attempt to make health care the issue of the 2020 campaign, a fight that many Republicans in Congress do not want after they suffered huge losses in the 2018 midterms, which focused in large part on health care. And as CNN's Caitlin Collins now reports, multiple White House officials are not even promising that President Trump is actually going to release any sort of proposal before the election. President Trump on the retreat. No, I wanted to delay it myself. I want to put it after the election. After promising for days that Republicans would replace the Affordable Care Act with something better. So we're going to get rid of Obamacare. The president put that promise in fine print, tweeting that Republicans will now wait until after next year's presidential election, 19 months away, when Trump claims Republicans hold the Senate and win back the House. Obamacare has been such a catastrophe. Trump seemed to be heeding warnings from Republican lawmakers who were sent scrambling last week after the Justice Department threw its weight behind a lawsuit that would invalidate Obamacare, despite having no GOP backup. We'll vote in the best health care package we've ever had. Sources tell CNN Republicans spent the last several days talking Trump down. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy called him directly to say this was not a fight the GOP wanted. A source adding McConnell advised Trump to focus on attacking Democrats for their Medicare for All idea and wait for the election before attempting any legislative efforts, a strategy laid bare on the president's Twitter feed. White House aides attempted to explain the president's deferral today. Was there actually a plan, or was the president? We've been working on a plan, so but does he have a choice. plan to we have replace to have better it. coverage? He is working on those uh, pieces with members of Congress. They want to have something in place, but again, he was talking about a vote on it, and that most likely would not come until after. Trump's latest move guarantees that health care will dominate the upcoming presidential election. And Democrats, who won back the House last fall in part because of the issue, say they're more than happy to have this fight. And now what is he saying today? It's like Nixon's secret plan. Nixon has a secret plan in the war in, uh, in uh, Vietnam. This is his secret plan. They're not going to pass it until after the 2020 election. Now, Jake, when the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was asked this afternoon if he and President Trump are still in a different place on health care, he responded, responded with a chuckle and said, quote, not any longer. Jake. Caitlin Collins at the White House, thanks so much. Joining me now is Senator Joe Manchin, a moderate Democrat from West Virginia who was recently reelected in that Trump-friendly state in a race focused in large part on health care. Uh, Senator, uh, good to see you. Congratulations on your, on your reelection a few months ago now. Uh, you've said that around 800,000 West Virginians with pre-existing conditions are at risk of losing their insurance coverage. The president tweeted, quote, Republicans will always support pre-existing conditions. But have you seen any plans from the president or your Republican colleagues that not only would prohibit insurance companies from denying coverage to those 800,000 West Virginians with pre-existing conditions, but also would prohibit them from charging them higher premiums? Jake, not at all. And uh, first of all, it's good to be with you. And it's, I'm glad the election's over. Uh, they're all brutal anymore, and I'm sure 2020 cycle will be just as ferocious as our eight, 2018 cycle. Uh, speaking about health care, yes, my race was predominantly uh, about uh, pre-existing conditions, uh, taking health care away from people uh, or making it so unaffordable uh, that they could not uh, make a decision to, to buy it. In West Virginia, you'd have people say, you know, I don't want to be a burden to my family. They used to say that, Jacob, when they said, I don't want to be a burden to my family. I know they can't afford uh, if I get sick again because I can't afford to buy the insurance or they will not insure me, 
then I'll let the, my hands uh, and my life is in the good uh, the hands of the good Lord, and uh, wh whatever will be will be. What they're saying is is that the family can't afford to be put in bankruptcy. We're not going back to that, and I think the president knows that people don't want to go back. My Republican friends and colleagues can't come up with a plan that better than what we have. Why can't they just work with us and let's fix it? And the only thing I've said about health care, so Mr. President, why don't you be this to repair care? We'll mm -hmm. call it Trump repair care. But the bottom line, Jake, we have two bills been sitting on Mitch's desk for over a year, a year and a half. When John McCain voted it down not to repeal it, he knew that we could fix it if we worked together. And that's what John wanted done. Lamar Alexander and Patty Murray started meetings immediately the next day. Mm -hmm. Every morning at 8 o'clock we would meet. We brought people all over the country in, looked at every type of health care plan. We came up with a fix. We looked at the reinsurance. We looked at basically holding people accountable and responsible right. for, the, for the newfound wealth. We can fix what we have if we'll just work together. But it just doesn't, just throwing it out and trying to start over, it's going to be absolutely horrific. And especially you know, when Democrats control the House also. Uh, the President and Republicans don't seem to have any plan right now, at least ready in the hopper. What happens if the Supreme Court strikes down Obamacare? What happens to those 800,000 West Virginians with pre-existing conditions? Well, they're like the hundreds and thousands of millions of people around the country that have pre-existing conditions become basically at the mercy of the insurance companies where we were before. And we thought that was inhumane. I think most of America thinks it's inhumane. Most Democrats and Republicans think it's inhumane to throw it back to say, okay, I'm sorry, this is your cap and your limit. You get any sicker than this, if it costs more than this, we cut you off. Uh, I'm sorry, you've had a pre-existing condition. Mm -hmm. I'll cover you for everything except the pre-existing condition. I'll cover that. It's going to be a much higher price. That's where we came from, Jake. And I, I don't know why we just can't sit down. If, if we had the backing of the president, and Lamar Alexander and some of our Republican friends sit down with some Democrats that are pragmatic about fixing this. And we could do it. But now if the president is sincere about not getting rid of it now, right. not trying to repeal it now, then please, Mr. President, have your Department of Justice support the law, the Affordable Care Act law, that basically uh, 20 million people getting insurance. So while, uh, the, while the president is trying to get rid of Obamacare, with, through his Justice Department and, and, and uh, other means. Uh, many of the 2020 Democratic presidential candidates are embracing Medicare for all. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told the president that he thinks Medicare for all is a, quote, ripe target, and that should be the focus for Republicans. Does that worry you? Well, here's the thing. I've said, you know, I've, I'm hearing people talking about Medicare for all or all type of a single payer system. I'm trying to fix the system we have in front of us. I've got people depending on getting what they're getting now. I've got people getting opiate addiction treatment for the first time. Uh, right now, Jake, if we do nothing, Medicare will become insolvent by 2026. Don't you think that ought to concern us? We can't even pay for the Medicare for some at 65 years of age and older that have it right now and guarantee they're going to have it. I just kept, I look at what's in front of me. Can I fix it? Yes, I can. I need to work together with my friends on both sides of the aisle. I don't know why we can't put America first. Health care is extremely the most important thing all of us have. Jake, we gave 20 million people health care coverage, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. These people never had anything before. I was a governor. What, you know what they were using before? Emergency room, highest cost of delivery, no preventive care, no way to maintain yourself, no way to monitor what right. was happening and fix it. So basically, they want to go back to that? That didn't work. And now you're saying with the 20 million people, we gave you the greatest wealth card you could ever have, which is a health card. Mm. Jake, we never gave them one, one sentence of instructions. You can buy a box of Cracker Jacks, get the prize inside. It'll tell you how to use it. We gave you health care, never told you how to use it. And there's so much savings to be had. There's so much more, more as far as increasing the quality of health to all individuals, starting with children all the way up. Mm -hmm. We should be working on that, and we're not.